Hello everyone, welcome back to Angina's Creations. Today's video I'm gonna show you how to customize your own paper mache letters. As you can see, some of them have cardstock and some of them are a shaker letter. Shaker means you can see sequence inside and then you can see all the little pieces move inside like that. I'll be showing you today how to create them. It is going to be kind of a long process, but you know, bear with me and follow each step so you can uh, learn how to make them, all right? So, let's get started. For your supplies, you're gonna need your paper mache letters. You can get paper mache at any craft store. You can check Joanne's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, or anywhere online, even Amazon. I'll be using the eight and a half size. I think this is the eight and a half. No, the 8.25 size. That is the size that I'll be using today. Some embellishments like ribbon, rhinestones, pearls, anything of your choice. If you want to glitter the back of your letters, you're going to need glitter and you're going to need Mod Podge. And if you're doing that route, you're going to need some brushes. Also, I'm using some paint. You can find all these supplies at Walmart or any local craft store. I'll be using parchment paper to cover my entire table when I'm going to paint and glitter the letters. Double-sided tape. I like this brand of double-sided tape. It is the 3M brand. You can find it on Amazon and they have different width sizes. 3D foam dots, pop dots, however you want to call them. You can even find these now at Dollar Tree. You can use pop dot tape. Today I'm not going to be using these, but if you don't want to go the cardstock route and you'll see what I'm going to show you to make your shaker letters, you can use uh, pop dot tape or cardstock. I'll be using cardstock. If you are printing anything for the designs of your letter, you can use glossy paper. I like to use Office Depot premium brochure and flyer paper. This one is 50 pound and it's compatible with my inject and laser printer. If you don't want to do the glossy way, you can just print on regular cardstock paper. If you're doing shaker letters, you need acetate paper. I get this one from Amazon and it is the 0 0.005 clear 25 sheets, 9 by 12. You can use any brand acetate paper. This is the brand that I'm going to be using and I have always used this. Or you can find even acetate paper at your local craft store that have like different colors and stuff like that. As you can see this one. All right. And I'll show you the brand of this one. If y'all know me by now, my favorite brand is Basil. So Basil has these, um, I guess they're called Mylar Pearl Sheets. So that's the one I'll be using. If you want to give an extra touch to your car stock, you're going to be using your embossing machine. It just gives it an extra touch, like, a, in, like an emboss um, style. And I'll be using this emboss folder. It's just the hearts. Y'all have seen me use this before for my embossed Hershey purses and chapstick purses and my Kit Kat wallets. So this is this one, it has hearts. You can find this one on Amazon. You're gonna need a pair of scissors, maybe an X-Acto knife. The X-Acto knife that I like to use is a finger X-Acto knife. And I'll show you right here is this one that I like to use. Um, a printer, if you're going to be printing images, I use a inkjet Epson. Uh, workforce 7720 you're gonna need a computer and you're gonna need your cutting machine and if anything throughout the way um oh wait your car stock of course car stock i'll be using different kind of car stock so this is a, a gold car stock i got this one from joann's i got this glitter one from michael's just different kind of glitters i got this marble one from walmart This was a metallic pack from also from Joann's. This one was from Joann's as well. And I know some people's gonna ask the pounds. I like to use thick car stocks. When I go to my local craft store, I like to feel how thick my car stock is. I'll be using plain car stock to give the thickness and the depth for my um, shaker uh, letter. So I'm just using plain. I actually got this pack from Tuesday morning for $4.99 so check your local area if you have a store called Tuesday morning and this is the basil brand I like the basil brand it's very good cardstock paper 
but if you could get just a big pack from joann's or michael's go ahead when you're doing this for your shaker letters to cut out your pieces it doesn't even matter the thickness because the more you cut the thicker um you're gonna see the thicker it is when you're gonna put your shaker and like i said just get a variety of cardstock depending on the theme and colors you're gonna be using check everywhere online scrapbook.com um, I have a whole bunch of links down below of different websites that I am affiliated with. Amazon, scrapbook.com, Crafts for Less, um, anywhere you can find cardstock. You're also going to need glue of your choice. I'm using my own brand of glue, aka Craft Glue and Genius Creations Craft Glue. You can use any glue of your choice. If you are doing the shaker letters, you are going to need sequins. Where can you find sequins? Literally anywhere. Party City, Dollar Tree, Michaels, Joann's anywhere amazon aliexpress anywhere anywhere of your choice so in this little container i got it from harbor freight it is a tool container it is 25 pieces so the big container and 24 of these for like five dollars so all your shakers or they're called sequins or table scatters sometimes they're called in party city they're called table scatters you can find these at dollar tree in the party section it says happy birthday. They have balloons and little presents and stuff like that. And even these snowflakes I got it on Christmas time. You can find pretty a, a little variety and you can find also these stars at Dollar Tree. I also like to use sea beads just because you can hear it when it shakes. So make sure your sea beads are really small, not so big and thick. So these are sea beads. Again, you can find them online or any craft store. All right. All right, now let's get started on how we're going to um, start prepping these letters and how we're going to design. Okay, so what I did was I covered my table with wax paper. You don't see it here because I already had done all the letters before I uh, started recording just because this process took longer. So I didn't want to record, record that entire process because it took at least two days. Reason why is because I glittered the back of my letters. How you will do that is, again, you don't have to glitter them. You can just add uh, a paint color if you want to go that route but I just added Mod Podge glitter Mod Podge glitter Mod Podge glitter let that dry at least for 20 minutes then I took off the excess glitter just with a um, sponge brush then I went again so with Mod Podge and glitter so I literally coated these letters three times with glitter again you find any glitter of your choice that you want to use this is a purple and gold theme birthday party that I am um sending some party favors to a customer so it's purple and gold now when i glitter all of them i turned all the letters around and i went around with some paint you don't have to do these steps again like i told you before this is how i'm doing this order you don't have to do all these steps but i like to make sure that all my stuff looks professional so i turned it around and I painted the front just because if my cardstock is not perfectly aligned to the front, at least I know that the you're not going to be able to see it as much because of the purple paint. All right. Excuse the bandaid on my finger. I really had a bad paper cut today. So there you go. All right. So that's how they look in the front. Do this step first because, like I said, it's going to take longer. And then when you are having this drying, you're able to go ahead to your computer and start designing your letters. And you kind of know what color you use for each letter in the back. And you know what color cardstock to use and stuff like that. All right? So now let's start designing. What you do is open up your software. Today I'll be using Silhouette Studio. And then you're just going to set up your paper size. If you're going to print, you are going to set up your paper size to the size paper you're going to be printing. How do you do that? You go on your page setup on your right. Is the first paper, the paper icon on your right. There's going to say width. You're going to put the size paper, the width, and the height. And then I know some people say, how can you see your paper white? Where it says transparency, I have mine on zero. Some people have it on 100. I'm going to be using Silhouette business edition you can still do this using basic edition do I, but i do highly recommend using business edition it is a one-time payment check down below for the um my affiliate link if you want to purchase business edition another thing you don't need a cutting machine to use this software do i recommend using a cutting machine to move these letters yes because it's going to make your job much easier can you design in here and bring it into Cricut? Yes. 
if you have business edition you are able to save this as a SVG and then bring it into Cricut okay now this is going to be a very long process but if you don't want to watch the full video and just stop and then come back the next day or come back a couple of hours but I like to explain everything in my video so people could really understand especially for my beginner friendly people okay first thing you need to do is you're gonna to go to your Hobby Lobby website or wherever you bought your letters from I bought my letters from Hobby Lobby I looked up Hobby Lobby paper mache letters and then I'm going to click on it and I bought the eight and one fourth letters and those are the ones that I'll be using now you're going to click on each letter that you purchased so let's say I bought the letter N I'm gonna click on the letter N so I, I right click and saved my image I saved into my folder after I saved my image I went in to remove BG's website I clicked on upload image looked for the image that I saved click on open and it's going to automatically take that white background off after it took it off I clicked on download and it downloaded to my computer after that I went back to silhouette and I did that with each letter I went to after I'm in Silhouette Studio, I'm going to go to File, I'm going to go to Merge, and I'm going to look for the letter. Click on OK. And the new update in Silhouette Studio, it automatically traces your PNG images, meaning that you don't have to take that imaginary square around it. How do you, so if I click on this and, and I go to my fill panel that looks like a paint palette on my right, and I click on the color black, it automatically is already the same shape. Now, a lot of the letters you are going to have to tweak it and modify it. And I'll show you that ahead in the video. With this end, I didn't have to do no modifications. I didn't have to take away nothing away from like the corners and stuff like that. You need to make sure that you measure your letter. Now, they say that the letter is 8 and 1 4, 5, I think by 5.5, if I'm not mistaken. If you go to the Hobby Lobby's website, yeah, it says 8, 1, 8 and 1 4 by 5 and 1 4 and 1 8. Now, if you put those exact measurements, which 8 and 1 fourth in height converts to 8.25 and 5 and 1 eighth if I'm not mistaken is 5 point let's see if you don't know what 1 eighth is just look it up and put 1 eighth as a decimal and it's going to say 0 1.25 And supposedly these are the measurements of your letter now what I notice is that all letters are not made equal so I, this is why it's gonna take a long process because you're gonna have to individually measure all your letters because when I did this order all my letters were not made equally so what you're gonna print this and I recommend printing this in white so you're gonna click on the color white in your fill panel you're gonna go to your outline color that's under your uh, paint palette where it says thickness go up just one so it's going to be 0 0.25 click on the color and click on the color black then you're going to print this out when you print it out you're going to cut out this end and see if it matches perfectly on your end if it doesn't you're going to keep tweaking these numbers until you are satisfied on how it looks and you're going to do this with each letter that's why I say it's going to be a long process I'm not gonna give you the measurements that I use because at the end I still had to keep tweaking keep tweaking and mine were not perfect even when I cut them out all right but that is the process that you're going to have to do and if you don't know how to print from here there is a printer icon right here you're gonna click on the printer icon you're gonna click on print you're gonna click on the printer that you have you're gonna click on preferences you're gonna click on I like to print on paper type premium presentation paper matte 
and leave an 8x11, click OK, and print. And if you want to know the printer that I have, I have a Workforce 7720. All right. So that was the end. I'm going to show you on like how to modify some of the letters of what did I mean about that. I'm going to zoom in on the E. If you notice on the letter E, you can kind of tell right here on this part, you could see like the, the 3D effect that this letter is giving because this is the actual letter standing as the mock-up they show you on the website. And as you can see right here, this is like the middle of the E and you actually don't need that because all you need is the front part of the E and I hope I'm making sense. So how would you remove that? is you will go and get a rectangle from your left on your shapes grab the rectangle make any rectangle on the e to cover that i'm actually going to color that white go to my fill panel color it white click on the outline color click on no color and i'm going to zoom in and let me color it black for now so y'all can see Kind of like align everything perfectly. And then what you will do is you would drag your mouse. You will click somewhere here on your screen. Drag your mouse over the E and the rectangle. Go to your modify panel on your right. It looks like a square and a circle. And click where it says divide. Click on divide. It might look like nothing happened. Click somewhere else on your screen. Remove that rectangle. And you remove that piece off from the E. And then you will do that same step right here. Okay. I also noticed that with my letter E, the middle part of the E was too short for the E that I got. So to extend that, all I did was grab a rectangle, made a rectangle right here. And let me color this black so you can see. And then, again, don't forget, let me remove that part first so y'all can uh, see. You don't need this extra part here. Make sure everything matches perfectly. Like this rectangle is not bigger or taller than the, the middle of the E. So everything has to match perfectly. You will select everything and then you will right click and click on weld. Once you click on weld, everything's connected. So basically if I color this entire letter E, that's connected there as you can see just because i'm trying to hurry up with the tutorial it's not perfect so make sure you make it perfect okay but that's how you will extend that e and then again you will um print this out in white and black outline make sure it fits okay i also had to do some modifications on the letter u Again, I apologize if this video is going to be too long, but like I said at the beginning, I like to explain everything so you could be able to learn and you don't get stuck on doing these letters. All right, on the letter U, you can see it also has that 3D effect right here, which you need to remove that. Just made a rectangle there. I'm going to select everything. Go to my modify panel and click on divide. Move the U to the side. And you see that U looks better. 
Now, what happened with the letter U, I noticed that when the one that I bought, it was kind of missing a little bit off from one side. And the way that I fixed that, now this might not be with, um, with the letter that you buy, but I'm just showing you what I had to do with mine. So what I did was I right click and duplicated this letter and I'm actually could color this letter already a, a different color if I want. So I'm just going to color it black. And then with this one, I just grab the knife tool from my left, hold down my shift key, and then I cut this letter in half right here. And then I remove that by clicking my delete on my keyboard. I put this over here. And I'm actually going to send this to the back just so I can see it. All I did was click on that, right click, and send it to the back. And then using my keyboard, I'm moving that in just a little bit because that was how much I needed to put on there because it was missing. Then I am going to drag, click somewhere on my screen, drag my mouse over both of them, right click and weld. And now that was that piece there was added to my U. Okay, so that's what I did with that. And I think that's all I had to modify. And where do you zoom in and out in silhouette? There's a minus sign and a plus sign up here. So you can zoom in and you can zoom out to see what you're doing. So let's start. I already have all my letters already traced and sized. I'm going to actually just select them all and bring them to a new document. And I have them all sized already. So this is the name that I'm going to be doing. All right. And they're all sized. That's the first thing I do. Make sure that you print and you size them once that you're good. Make sure you save them so you don't have to keep doing this every time you have an order. So I already have all these saved and ready to go. Now, what I can also say is I have three ends in this what I'm doing and all my ends were not the same and then all my E's were not the same and all my U's were not the same either so keep that in mind guys that's what happened to me and now I'm going to show you exactly how I design mines but you are going to design yours however you want so my first end which from the first name end I'm just going to right click and duplicate it so I don't I don't delete that the original end so the first end, all I did was I just cut this out uh, out of metallic cardstock. So I put it here on my paper. I left my paper on 8 by 11. Let me turn on my machine. Send panel on my right. The settings that I like to cut my cardstock in, I'm actually going to give you my settings. They are blade of seven, force of 33, speed of six. Sometimes I'll bring that speed, that force down to like a 28 or a 29. And then sometimes I'll bring my blade down to a six as well. Get some uh, scrap cardstock and figure out what settings you like and just save it to your computer. So while you're uh, changing your blade and force number right here, it will ask you if you want to save it. And then you could save it and, and name it to whatever you want to name it, okay? So with my first end, I only cut out one piece of cardstock and I cut that out out of purple metallic cardstock, okay? My E. My E, I'm going to right click and duplicate it. And now my E, I made that into a shaker. First thing you need to do is I'm going to color this white so y'all are able to see what I'm doing. And I'm going to zoom in, okay? So I colored it white. While you have your E selected, you're going to go to your offset panel. Offset is the icon on your right that looks like a double star. You're going to click on internal offset, meaning you want to do an, an offset inside of the E, not outside. Outside means offset. You want to do it inside, so it got to be internal. If you do it in offset, it's not going to fit on your letter. So remember that, internal offset. Here, you're going to play with your distance, meaning that you want to see how thick of the offset you want it, and that is where you're going to be putting your tape at. I actually did mine on three, so I just kept going up, 
on my distance. As you can see, it's getting bigger and bigger. And I did mine 0 0.300. That's what I'll be using. So I could be using not so thin uh, tape, okay? Now I have these two right here. I have two E's and I could actually color them. So I'm gonna color the one black and hold up, cause now then I can't see that. So undo, your undo button is the arrow right here. Let me color the front first. All right, see, internal offset. Now, as you can see, if I just move uh, my internal offset away, nothing happened. So let me undo and put that back there. I'm going to select somewhere here on my screen and drag my mouse to select them both. Go to my modify panel and click where it says subtract all. Once you click on subtract all, click somewhere else on your screen, move that middle E, your internal offset, and this is what you're left with. Okay? This is what you are left with now the way that i like to do it is i like to cut out multiple pieces of this piece right here to give it dimension so my uh shakers can move inside a lot of people don't do it the cardstock way what they do is they put double-sided tape all around their e to give it the that that dimension sometimes i don't like doing that because it's just a lot and a lot and a lot of double-sided tape I have a lot of cardstock in my house, so I just prefer the cardstock way. So this piece right here, I am going to put my paper size. I will go back to my page setup, which is the uh, paper on my right, the first icon. My media size, I'm going to change it to 12 by 12 because I'll be using 12 by 12 cardstock. I'm going to click on the E, right click it and duplicate. What the? Right click and duplicate. So I can have two of them and I'm going to cut this out four times. So I'll be having eight pieces of this E. You can do more or you can do less. It's totally up to you. Remember the internal offset? This is where we're going to be putting our images. Do you have to put images in there? No, you can just uh, cut this out of any decorative car stock. Like if you want a glittery car stock or shimmer car stock anything of your choice but today I'll be having to put images in there don't remember cut this out I did four pieces of this so, I'll, so I cut four papers so that means I had eight pieces so I cut eight pieces of this now I'm gonna show you how to design this E multiple ways let's say you are having um, a coco melon or coco melon however you call this party right uh, let's say I'm just gonna click this right click uh, copy image go into silhouette right click and paste and then I'm going to right click and send the image to the back so I can see the E and put it where it goes or wherever you want it now I'm going to Click somewhere else on my screen, drag my mouse to select both. Let me duplicate this because I'm going to show you different ways. Drag my mouse to select both. Go to my modify panel and click on crop. And you crop that image in there. Now, as you can see, you're missing a lot of stuff on this image. So you have multiple ways to fix this. Go to your fill panel, the paint palette on your right. In your fill panel, you have three options. So click on the pattern option, click on advanced options where it says scale. You can scale it down or you can scale it up. Also here, it says pan pattern. When you click on pan pattern, you're going to see a little circle in the middle with a plus sign. Click on it with your mouse. Do not let it go and you're able to move your background around to fix it. You see that? So you're able to do that. Now, what do you do with this image? This is the image that you're going to see when you put all your layers. 
every single layer is going to go on top. And that's what you're going to see in all the shakers in the middle. Also, remember, I cut this um, out of four pieces of paper. That means I have eight pieces. But the last one, meaning that it will be nine pieces, the last E that goes all the way on the top, I cut that out of glitter cardstock, like a glitter gold or a glitter purple or any decorative cardstock. And that's going to be the last one on the top. Okay. Now, let's say you are customizing this for a customer like I did. And she wanted pictures of her daughter. Her daughter's turning 13. Now, I already made these letters, as you can see. So I'm just going to go grab pictures from Google, and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm just going to click on an image, right-click, copy image, go into Silhouette, right-click and paste. You are going to click on the E because remember, we just bring all these images or so they're like going to be on the front and I don't like it to be like that. I'm going to click on the E, right click and bring to the front so it's in the front of the, all the pictures. Now, place all the images where you want them to go. Let's say I want this one here, but I want at least her face to show. I'm going to keep sizing them to however you want. Let's say I want this one here, but you're not even going to see her eyes. Let's put that one shorter. You're just going to keep on placing them. Or you want them know that you think that where all the pictures belong if you like how everything's looking remember I have the E in the front now what you need to do is click on the E right click and send to the back don't forget that it might look like a mess right now but don't forget to send that E to the back click somewhere else here on the screen drag your mouse and make sure you have everything selected as you can see right here I'm missing a piece of covering that E okay click somewhere on your screen Drag your mouse over your all your pictures and the letter E. Go to your modify panel and click where it says divide. Once you click on divide, it might look like nothing happened. But if I zoom in, you're going to see like a lot of pictures are cut into that E. And you're going to see if I click here on the top, click on delete, it's going to be deleting everything that's not supposed to be there. going to zoom out and then I'm going to right click and drag my mouse over it. Make sure that you're not leaving any little pieces that don't belong there. Click somewhere else on my screen, drag it, right click and group together and then you are left with this E and then that um, image 
could go inside of your shaker and now it has images of the person that you are customizing it for. Now, sometimes you might have little gaps in between your images and that's easy to fix. All you have to do is right click. I mean, remember this E? So don't forget that you could also duplicate that E. I already had one here of the Coco Melon. And then you could just color it, let's say, black. And put this one on top by selecting them both. Going to your transform panel on your right and clicking on center to center them together. Right click and group them together. So all those little gaps are black. And this is going to go right here in the middle. All right. You can do this with one picture. You can do this with two pictures. It really doesn't matter how many pictures you use. I'm going to ungroup it. And like I said, you can even add only two pictures, one picture. I'm going to send it to the back so I can see. So don't forget to send the letter to the back, select both, okay, I'm missing a little bit of the E here, select both, everything, go to your modify panel, click on divide, click somewhere on your screen and delete everything that doesn't belong there. And then as you can see in her face here, you could barely see it. So don't forget to go to the paint palette, go to the pattern option, go to advanced option and where it says paint pattern, click on it and you can move her image around. And then that's it. And then don't forget that you need to cut out the last piece of the top of the um, color that you want. And that's what I did with the E. All right. Don't forget to also group your images because if you don't group it, it's going to come apart. So make sure that you select somewhere on your screen. Right click, drag everything, right click and group it so everything moves together. All right. Now, that's what I did with the E. What I did with the V, I'm going to duplicate it. I just wanted layers. So the back of my V, I cut it out of decorative um, metallic cardstock, right? So I'm just going to color it gold so you can have the visual. I think I did gold. I'm looking at the picture while I'm showing you guys. Okay, I think I did it gold. Then what I did was, while well, I have my V selected... I went to my offset panel and I clicked on internal offset and then I did another internal offset. So I have three layers. So layer number one, layer number two. So I'm going to color this one yellow so you can think it's gold. The second layer was kind of purple. And then the front one was a decorative cardstock that I cut out. Let's just say another purple. So I have three layers. So this layer, this layer is going to go here. And this layer is going to go here. Now, because I am cutting out of layers, you don't have to do this. But the, the first layer, I just cut out one piece. The second layer, I right click and duplicate it and cut it out two times so it could be thicker. Cut that out. And this layer, I also cut it out two to three times so it can be thicker. Just because I like my stuff not so flimsy. And then I cut this out as well. All right. 
that's what I did with the letter V. I also have a bow in the middle of the V. And let me undo so y'all can see it. In the middle of, so this is how the layers are going to look. I went to Google and looked up a bow silhouette clip art free SVG. I clicked on one, right clicked, copy image, go into silhouette, right click and paste. Go to my trace panel on my right, click where it says select trace area, trace a bow. Click where it says trace, delete that image. I'm going to color this white in my paint palette. Go to my outline color, click on no color. And I am going to size the bow where I want it to go. Once I'm satisfied on how it's looking, let me color it black just so y'all can see it on the screen. I cut this bow out at least three times so it can be thick. And I cut my bow out of white. And I will emboss my bow. And then I just glued it here. All right. So that was the letter V. The A, again, was a shaker. So it was the same process as the letter E. I'm going to color it white. Go to my offset. Click on internal offset. Go all the way to 0 0.300. So now I have this. I'm going to select them both. Go to my modify panel and click on subtract all. Remove that middle A, my internal offset A. I'm going to color this black so y'all can see it. And I'm going to color this purple so y'all can see it. All right. So I will cut this out four times out of 12 by 12 paper so I can have eight pieces. I will cut out a final piece of decorative cardstock of my choice. And then this one here, I will add my images, which the way I showed you guys. All right. So that was my A. The next E was layers. So while this E is selected, let me color it white. I just went to my offset panel, clicked on internal offset, and I think I did this one around 1.45 or 1.50 let me color it purple and this one right here was like a dark purple so i just cut this the back out of one piece of cardstock glue it on my letter and then this one i cut it out two times i just right click and duplicate it i cut it out two times so it can be thicker and I did emboss the front piece. And then I just glued some um, sequin stars all around my E. And that's all I did with that one. My H was another shaker letter. The same process, guys. And then I put my images here, cut this out, 
four times. All right, same process over and over. That was that one. Now with this one from Nunu, it was a doubled, um, like an internal uh, offset. Let me zoom in. So internal offset at 1.5. Actually, the back was like a light color, and then the front was a darker color. So this is my layers. And then on the end, I wanted to have like a drip effect on the side. And what I did with that was, I just went to Google and looked up drip SVG for free. Then I just looked up one that I liked. Then I right clicked, copy image, go into silhouette, right click and paste. I went to my trace panel, click on select trace area, selected my drip, wait till everything turns yellow. If it's not fully yellow, you can go up your threshold, click on the word trace, delete the image, and then you are left with the drip. I am going to color it so you can see it. Then holding my shift key on my keyboard, I am going to rotate this to my side and I'm going to put it exactly where I want it to go. All right, so I like it there. So then I'm going to cut this out of gold cardstock. So I will cut this out first. Then I will cut out this out two times because I want it to be thicker. And I'm going to cut this out of gold cardstock. And then I will glue this on top of uh, my end. All right. That's how I did that one. So that was that other end. And then um, with the use... It was the same um, internal offset and subtract all for the um, shaker. And the other end, what I did was I, let me color it white. I did an internal offset of 1.5. So 0, 1.5. And let me color it purple. And the back was gold so the back was gold the internal offset purple and then what I did was that purple internal offset I right click and duplicate it so I can have another copy let me move this to the side and let me zoom in and then while I have my inter my other duplicate of internal offset I grabbed my drip and I turned it around facing down like this right click bring to the front and then i placed it right here and see how i like it then i click somewhere here on my screen right click and dragged my mouse over the end and the drip I went to my modify panel and click on divide. Then I move this end, the bottom of the end and this bottom of the end. And then I deleted all this. And then I'm left with these two pieces. With these pieces, I am going to glue right on top of this end. But it matches perfectly because remember, we right click and duplicated that internal. So it could be the same size, all right? And then I cut those pieces out of my decorative cardstock two times. So I cut two pieces. I think it was three pieces of this one. So right-click, duplicate, right-click, duplicate, just so it could be thicker because it's going to be like a 3D effect. And then this one again, right-click, duplicate, right-click, duplicate, all right? So all those pieces, I use cardstock. 
And then all the pieces that I had to print, I just used regular white cardstock. Once you are done cutting and printing every single cardstock, I just put it with each letter how I'm going to be gluing and assembling, okay? So that's how I have it at the moment. And now we're going to start gluing and assembling everything. I'm going to go one letter at a time and I'm going to speed this process up. I'm not going to be talking. You're just going to watch me do everything because if I talk throughout the entire thing, it is 10 letters. It's going to take too long. I am going to say about the letter N because I am using metallic and whatever glue you put behind metallic, you can see the marks of where you glued. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put double sided tape in the back of my metallic N because if this was just going to go there and this was going to go on top like an offset or internal offset, you, it didn't really matter. But because I want this to be in the front and you are going to be seeing the glue marks, I'm just going to put double sided tape here tape this to the back and then here I'm going to use my glue to attach to my letter. In this part right here, after you add the image, is where you can use your double-sided tape and go all around with double-sided tape. And you will put enough double-sided tape. You could go one time, then two times, then three times until you have that thickness that you want for your shakers to move. So like I said in the beginning, you can use double-sided tape, go all around the edges, or I'm going to be using cardstock too, and I'm going to be using eight pieces of cardstock. Make sure you use double sided tape to add your acetate paper and not hot glue or any other glue. What works best to put on acetate paper guys is double sided tape.
Look at this V. I didn't use double-sided tape because that gold was going to go in the back and no one's barely going to see it. Look that I use glue and you can see all the lines of the glue. That's why I say use double-sided tape if you're going to be using metallic paper and people are going to be able to see it.
all right guys here is the final result on how they turned out hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please comment down below and also please give me a big thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed yet please go ahead and subscribe and click on the notification bell so you can be notified when i upload all my other videos also if you're not in my facebook crafting group it is angina's creations crafting lounge feel free to go ahead and join if you would like to order anything from me, feel free to message me on Facebook and Instagram at Andrina's Creations or email me at Andrina's Creations at Yahoo.com. Of course, I hope everyone's having a blessed day and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.